business with a servant's heart. Servant's heart. Welcome to the podcast. Inspiration, motivation, take servant's heart. Listen to the podcast. We're all about to talk about life. Our guests will share their life story. We want you to success in life and business. We're ready and we will start shortly. We're gonna talk about life, we're going to speak on business You're gonna shine bright, we are going to witness Business with a servant's heart, servant's heart. With hosts Steve Ramon and Ray Ramona. Inspiration, education, talks servant's heart. Listen to the podcast Steve Ramona. Brainshare Business Mentors proudly presents Brainshare.us, the ultimate business education platform, delivering the proven systems, processes, tools, and knowledge that empower you to build the business of your dreams. With 13 high-powered courses encompassing over 240 lessons accessed online on your schedule. Running a business is the hardest thing you'll ever do. We've helped thousands of business owners gain the leadership, communication, and business skills needed to build the business of their dreams. We can help you. Choose your learning path. Scuba Squad is the premier membership program for today's business leaders with access to all Brainshare material and double our money-back guarantee. Brainshare Basics, the ultimate business framework course, a hard-hitting 13-week program to lay the necessary foundation to build the business of your dreams or take individual courses as you need them. Every course has dozens of lessons with video, practical exercises, precise documentation, and the opportunity for direct feedback from a Brainshare mentor. All programs have our exclusive 30-day money-back guarantee. No questions asked, don't wait. Choose your path and start today. Welcome to Doing Business with a Servant's Heart podcast. Doing business and life with a purpose. Serving others and achieving success. I'm your host, Steve Ramona. We created this show for you because we want everyone to be motivated, inspired, and educated to learn how to do business and live life to make an impact in the world. I want you to think about, as you're listening to my incredible host, how will you serve today? And what impact will you create from that service? I want to thank my sponsors, uh, Brainshare.us, build a business that works without you, discover how to create a self-sustaining business that thrives even in your absence. You can have a business that doesn't tie you down. We'll guide you through the steps to build an enterprise that operates smoothly without your constant oversight. Visit brainshare.us to learn how to set the foundations for a business that stands the test of time. With Brainshare Business Mentors, you can build a business that works without you. And pitchdb.com. Successfully connect with over 11,000 conferences, 3 million podcasts, and a lot of other things to be a guest and build your thought leader platform and scale your business. Increase your network, increase your net worth. And I'm excited today because as you mentioned in my monologue, there's impact. And I had his partner, Bob Bergon, who wrote the Go-Givers book that sold millions. And it really fits with this podcast. We're going to now take it to the step further with my guests and talk about sales and objections, which I love to talk about. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be on it with you. Thank you so much. So streetwise to sales wise, that's an interesting title. How'd you come up with that? You know, it's a very interesting story. Uh, I I had decided on the plot line for the book, the way we did the co-authorship, we're, we're using Bob's sales training, my sales training, and then I was the lead writer for the storyline. And I had I was sitting in New Orleans, Louisiana, with my wife on somewhere around New Year's Eve of, of 2022, going into 2023. We're having dinner one night. I'm watching a street busker sing, and the entire plot line came to me. And it's basically the story is about a young man who grew up on the streets of New Orleans that um, he's a little bit of a smart mouth, a little bit immature, and he gets himself fired very early in the book. And so he ends up in sales kind of by accident. And uh, I, very similar to me in that respect, I look at, back at it now and I say, well, it was by divine providence in my case, but it was uh, by accident. And in the plot line, as I was developing the plot, I actually got the help 
of a friend of Bob's and mine, uh, a lady named Alexandra Watkins. Her business is naming things. And I had told her all the different intricacies we were going to work into the book. And uh, she actually, by the way, if you've ever gone to a Wendy's and ate the Wendy's Baconator, she named that. That was her work there. Anyway, so she and I brainstormed a while. I got it pretty much the way I wanted. I ran it by Bob. He said, that's great. Let's go with it. And it, it fits the style of the character. It fits the, the the whole musical theme in the book, as you've seen on the, the graphics for the book and all that. Plus the storyline, music's heavily involved in the storyline. It just it just seemed to work. So become objection proof and beat the sales blues. It just yeah. all fit. And I look at it as one of those uh, one of those moments where the good Lord was looking out for me, I guess. So. Oh, amen. I love that. Small World, Alexander Watkins was on my podcast four weeks ago. Are you We've serious? connected and I do referrals with her back and forth. A shout out to Alexandra. I'm going to send this to you. You are incredible. I love you. It sounds like Jeff loves you and Bob. She had mentioned Bob. And yeah, isn't that amazing? The Baconator. We hear it all oh. the time and it just, and she's incredible what she does. But let's get she's back. A genius. Yeah. Oh, crazy genius. How did you meet Bob? I met Bob actually, uh, I guess it was about 22 years ago now. I had, uh, in, in January of the year 2000, I was a, a district manager for a Fortune 500 insurance company. I was up in North Texas. And I was one of those district managers. I would make my numbers one year. I would miss them the next. I, I wasn't in danger of getting fired, but I certainly was no superstar. And uh, a sales mentor of mine gave me two books. And he said, Jeff West, I want you to read these two books. Now, with my nature, somebody tells me they want me to do something. I can at, at times, at least back in those days, I could be a little, just a little bit pushed backish. And I said, Frank Davies, I'm a grown man. I'll decide if I'm going to read that book. And I'm reading that book. <laughs> so, and so, But there were two of them. One was John Maxwell's 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And the other was Endless Referrals by Bob Bird. Never heard of Bob Berg, didn't know anything about the book, but I read both of those books and I began to apply it in my industry, tweak it and make it work in my industry. And my career just took off. Two years later, I got promoted to be a regional manager. Two years after that, I got promoted to be a state manager and finished my last 10 years in that industry with as a state manager. But while I was a, a district manager and my career was taking off, the state manager would have me come in and talk to all the new sales schools and, and tell my story. It was kind of a motivational story, but I would always end up talking about endless referrals month after month after month. Well, sometime in about 2003, I get a phone call. Uh, my administrator buzzes in and she says, Jeff, you got a phone call. And I said, who, who is it? She said, somebody named Bob Berg. And I thought, sure, my buddies are pulling a joke on me right now because I've been talking about this book all the time. And so I get on the phone and of course, you know how Bob's voice is, it projects well. And he's got, we call it positive vocal velocity. <laughs> and he gets, I get to the phone and he says, uh, hi, Jeff, this is Bob Berg. And I said, and I'm quoting, sure it is, fella. Oh and my he God. Said, he said, excuse me? <laughs> I said, is this really Bob Berg? And he said, yeah, this is really Bob Berg. And I told him the story and how much it had meant to me and, and how I had promoted it. And so we started a friendship then. And he, he was prospecting me to get into uh, to speaking events for that insurance company. And so he was doing what he preaches, you know, and, uh, but we became friends and we've stayed friends ever since. And when I retired from the insurance industry to write and, and begin speaking and coaching, uh, he was just awesome. He, he, behind the scenes of the man is everything you'd want him to be. He's exactly like he is the message he espouses. He is the go-giver. It's just amazing. Yeah. And I love that story of the lesson is networking. You keep talking about the book, using a book. He found you somehow, some way, and look where you guys are today. It's right. magical. It's so magical. It I, there's one word you use and Bob taught me this. So I'm going to give him credit. Um, parable. You guys are writing right. parables. A lot of people don't know what that means. Explain what parable means when you write this book. And, and of course, the go-giver as well. Sure. Great questions. Uh, great question. This is live TV, folks. We can make mistakes. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> great, <laughs> great question, Steve. Uh, a parable is kind of its own split genre is a better way to say it. You know, there are a lot of topical nonfiction books out there and various mm. uh, things in, in business, the business world and in personal self-help and all that. And then there are the fiction stories. 
And I love reading and both of them. And I, I, I love that concept. And I think the first time I ever read a parable, which is basically a combination of the two, you know, the, the bisect codes where you're setting the categories up for your book, they don't have a business parable uh, genre, yeah. which would really be a combination of fiction and not topical nonfiction because you're teaching real things. You're just using a story to do it. Been some great ones out there, obviously, uh, who moved my cheese and yeah. many others, but the, it, that, genre drew me in because I remember reading my very first one. It was by Og Mandino, who's gone now. Love Og Mandino. Oh, yep. me too, buddy. Me too. Uh, the greatest salesman in the world. It was just huge. Uh, the 12th angel. I mean, he had so many great parables, but that was my, my favorite way to read it. So when I began to write, that's what I wanted to write. I, that way I could, I could exercise my, my fiction muscles, I, I, which is where my heart is, but also teach things that I knew how to teach really well. I, I could teach those. And so that's how it began. I didn't understand until later why parables work so well. Uh, one of the brandings, uh, my branding that I use when I'm doing sales training and workshops and keynotes is called Fusion Points Engage the Science of Persistence. And I won't go into all that on your show today because I don't want to get too sciencey, but basically uh, the, the neurology of the brain works like this. Every decision we make is always a combination of logic and emotion. There are no exceptions. And what happens is when we experience a, an emotion in our brain, our brain shoots an electrical signal down into our chest and in our stomach, and it, it's called a somatic marker, and it makes us feel something physiologically. Mm -hmm. if, if it's what I call a negative emotion, like you know, fear, anger, frustration, those kind of things, that feeling that we get when that somatic marker triggers is very uncomfortable. We don't like that. So when you think about all decisions being made with a combination of logic and emotion, those two coming together there, whatever's going on, the person wants to get away from it. And logically, they're never, it doesn't matter how logical it is, they're not going to do it. But the reverse is also true. Um, when you When the brain has a positive emotional response, it sends a somatic marker into your body and it's an experience that you love. You like the way that feels. If you're experiencing joy, love, happiness, a sense of belonging, well, your body responds positively. So when you combine that with the logic, the decision is to move forward and it creates uh, tenacity. And, and my branding, I always say fusion points are those unique moments in time where positive emotion and logic merge and ignite. And what happens is people persist. They're comfortable taking the next step in whatever you're asking them to do. It's, it's just, it's not magic, it's science, but it's so cool how all that works. A business parable does exactly that because I write stories that that draw the reader in and make them, in, they, they get connected with the characters. I get, I get more, I, I've gotten so many emails right now. Of course, the, the two main characters in Streetwise are Thaddeus Tucker and uh, Livia Aurelia Cole. That's, she's kind of a secondary character. Of course, there's the mentor Andre as well. I get emails all the time. Well, are, are Thaddeus and, and Livia going to get married someday? And I just smile and say, we'll see. <laughs> but that's, that's that great. connection. People, yeah. if they, if you can put a positive emotional experience with the logic of what they're learning, not only are they comfortable taking the next step, when they're trying to learn, they retain it. They retain it at a higher percentage that way. Is the example being, let's use Tom Brady. He dove into, he's probably one of the best quarterbacks around, but we always hear... You know, he worked hard at his craft. That's why he was there to 45. So that's kind of similar where he was persistent, training, nutrition, practice. Is that right. what you're saying as well? Somewhat, yes, because there's yeah. a repetition there. And yeah. for him to persist like that, he had to have a positive emotional experience of what he wanted to accomplish in his career, the 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 great level that he achieved, the the experience of having mm -hmm. the fans appreciate you, all of that had to go into the mix, plus the way he could provide for his family at such a high level. So all of that positive emotion linked with a logic that said, I have got to bust it. I've got to stay after it. I've got to work, work, work to get there. And there was no stopping it. Yeah. Absolutely no stopping it. That was for selfish reasons, because I'm a big sports fan. So I want to make sure I understood. And the big <laughs> elephant in the room, I love this because it's really simple but we Absolutely. got to take action to do it. To me, the big elephant in the room is, and I read through the whole synopsis of the book, is objections. 
Right. I mentor businesses and salespeople, not to your level, but I talk to people. You know, that's the big thing. Oh God, they said no, and then they do this. You know, if you're watching, and they get they get fear. What What do you talk about in the book about objections? Well, uh, you know, we we we've uh, Bob's branding on what he taught on objections for decades now has been uh, becoming objection proof, and uh, objection proof is kind of both a philosophy and a methodology where sales professionals are able to effectively work within the objection uh, portion of their sales conversation, both leading up to that point and then during the conversation itself and helps them do that. Because what happens, is it's, it's kind of like what we were talking about a minute ago. When a salesperson gets an objection, the brain has a negative emotional response. I'm not gonna make the sale, I need the money, I'm gonna do this, I, you know, it, it's a negative emotional response sends that somatic marker to the body. They're trying to stay logical, but it's all kind of backfiring on them. And it, it, the, the truth is, when the idea about becoming objection-proof, uh, most sales training, as you and I both know, it, it tends to teach people how to overcome an objection, how to, how to well, if, if they say this, you say that. If they say this, you say that. Well, there's a couple of challenges with that. Number one is people don't like to be overcome well, maybe if it's overcome with joy or happiness, okay, sure. But an objection is really a lot like an opinion. And when people, uh, when you're trying to overcome someone's opinion, they don't care for that. You, you need to look no further than today's political climate. It creates a negative energy. And what happens in that case, when you're trying to overcome an objection, uh, you're making that, that person get defensive, push back, and it makes it tougher. But if you'll reframe how you think about an objection and you, you, you remember that, that, that what you're trying to really accomplish there, uh, there's a process we teach in the book that not only does it actually help you effectively work with that objection, but it helps you do it in such a way that when you're through, your bond between that prospect and you, it's, it's better than it was before you started the meeting. And it's because of how you worked with them. And what we teach in the book is step number one is to control your own emotions. Because again, when we get that objection, we know uh, that it, it's triggering. And so control your own emotions first. But then the next thing, empathize with the person that you're visiting with. You're absolutely, it, it sales at its very best is when you're focused on the needs of another person and how their life becomes better when they're doing business with you. And then you help them with whatever need they have. You help find a solution and you get paid for making that happen. And so when you work through the process, uh, you control your emotions and then you focus on them with your empathy. You let them know, hey, you know what, the, whatever concern it was, because it's going to vary based on industry. I, I understand what you're saying, I think. Let me ask you to make sure. And you ask questions uh, to, and you let them know, hey, that's a valid thought. I, I get it. That's a valid thought. And you ask questions to make sure you understand, because quite frankly, Many times the first objection they'll tell you is not really the objection. It's kind of a surface level excuse or block many times. You know, they, they may not even know why they're, they don't want to move forward. They just, as Bob likes to say, that little spidey sense, that little tingling is going on and they know they're not comfortable moving forward. So they say, eh, your price is too high or it's the wrong color, whatever. But if, you'll, if you will uh, start off controlling your own emotions and then empathize with their concerns and say, if you don't mind, let me ask you, help me see it from your perspective. What exactly is, is, is it that you're, that you're thinking so that I can understand it better. And then you dig in a little bit to find if it's, if that's, you know, whatever the, the issue is, but you do it in such a way that you're really trying to focus on them and help them. And once you've done that, something amazing happens when it gets to the point where you understand their, their objection and, uh, you're, you've empathized, they get it, that you're not trying to push something on them. You're trying to see if you can make something work, and that's great. They'll mentally give you permission to reframe it for them, to change their perspective. So that after you've done that, after you've, after you've asked the right questions, after you've isolated the issue, make sure, hey, well, is there anything else that would, be a, uh, that would keep you from moving forward if we can get this issue solved? And they say, yeah, no, that's the only issue. Or if they say another one, then you work with that one as well. Once you've done all of that and they see your genuine heart, that you're really focused, I love the title of your show. It makes a perfect sense. That, that servant's heart, when they see that, what they do is they mentally relax and they give you permission to help change their perspective. And then when you offer your solution 
and your social proof that, hey, here's what our clients say about us, it is often that in of itself is often enough just to move the process forward. Man, I could listen to you for hours because <laughs> it, 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 we all get objections. Anybody that's done sales has an objection. That I think right. we can say is 100% guarantee, right? right. So right. you're saying emotion and logic, those two come together. If you control those, yeah. your chances of a sale are much higher. You are because when you when you control those and you're focused on how you can help make the other person's life better, I always say you're really focused on your value proposition. Most companies don't really understand what a value proposition. That's not fair. Their intent is great, but the way they think of their value proposition, in my opinion, kind of misses the mark a little bit. And it's a okay, we charge this, they give us, uh, we give them this for that, that's the transaction, but then we do this and we do this and we do this, and it's their value adds. But the truth is it has nothing to do with their value project, their the value proposition. The value proposition has nothing to do with me, has nothing to do with you, has nothing to do with how great our companies are, how great salespeople are in general. It's everything about how their life gets better because they decided to work with you on something. And when you're, you think of it that way, your value proposition isn't your value proposition, it's theirs. So I, I, just, I define a value proposition as their value from our proposition. And when you're focused on that, oh my gosh, yeah, what happens is you create that positive emotional context, pairing it with the logic of what you're doing, makes it easy for them to make a decision to move forward with if you do it right. Doesn't mean that it works all the time, nothing works all the time. And that's also a positive, nothing works all the time. You make no money, <laughs> but it's, it's one of those things. Uh, it is just part of a process. It's just brilliant. And Bob's yeah. been teaching it for years. I didn't understand why it worked, but I knew that it did. And then once I began my research into fusion points, I said, this is why all of that works. It's exactly yeah. why. So. It, it, you said something too, that I got to take some notes here. Cause you're just filling my notebook up, which is so fabulous. It's always good learning questions. You know, as a podcast host, I teach people on their podcast, get to ask questions and shut up. Right. Talk about, let's get deeper in a little bit about questions, how important they are during the sales process. Well, that's such a, such a strong point and great question. In the world of sales, one of the things that we have to kind of accept, and it's, it's not the way you are, it's not the way I am, it's not the way the majority of salespeople are, but in general, the public persona of what a salesperson is has been shaped by society. Uh, things they'll see on TV, uh, that, where the salespeople are pushy and and they're they're not not demonstrating the highest value of sales, in my opinion. But anyway, questions are part of what redirects that because the challenge you run into in a sales conversation is that if it's coming out of your mouth as a salesperson, unless you they already know you, like you, and trust you, they're not necessarily going to take what you say at face value. Mm -hmm. But if you ask the right questions, you'll get them to discussing their needs. Uh, you'll get them to, to discuss the things that are going on in their world. And if you, you know your value, you know the value that you bring to the table. If you ask questions that get them talking about that in the sales conversation, well, you'll find, especially if your questions are great, is that your prospect will say what your prospect needs to hear. And it comes out of their mouth instead of yours. You know, I, I used to be in the insurance industry, very heavily involved in the employee benefit arena. And when uh, I could easily go in there and tell somebody, you know, we can put together a benefit package for you that helps you attract a better employee, helps you retain a better employee, helps you control costs. We can do all these things. I could say all of that, but I'm the salesperson. But if I ask questions, and one of my favorite in the insurance industry, by the way, and I know you'll appreciate this, uh, one of my favorite questions was, you know, a lot of companies out there are making some very difficult decisions to uh, cut back on benefits. Some companies have even cut them out completely just because they couldn't afford to do it anymore. And yet you still go to that same effort, the expense, and the, the, the trouble that you really have from that. If you don't mind me asking, why do you do that? Why is it so important to you? And then they would tell me, well, I'm trying to attract good employees. I'm trying to do this and my benefit package says this and that. And, and they'll tell me what they want. And then it was very easy after I'd ask really great questions to say, guess what, Steve? You know, I've got some good news for you. There are some things that you told me that you're trying to accomplish 
that we can actually help you accomplish. And in my case, it was not a it was not funded by the company, except in rare occasions, it was an employee payroll deduction. And there's some things that you're already trying to accomplish that we can help you do. And quite frankly, we're even going to get you a tax break because we're here. This could work out pretty good for us. And the thing about us, him, the person and I together, this could work out really good for both of us. And they'd say, well, really? So he said, let me show you what I'm talking about. And then I would go into my recommendation phase, which is what most people think of as a sales, as a sales presentation. I avoid the term sales presentation. And it's just a personal tick of mine. I don't, a sales presentation tends to make new salespeople think they're supposed to talk a lot. And, yeah. I, and I keep telling them, you got two ears and one mouth. There's a proportion there that you need to follow. But, <laughs> but when you get to that point where you're making your recommendations, then you are telling more. You're saying, here's yeah. kind of what I recommend in your case. But then you say, does that make sense? Does you see how that's going to get that done for you? And they're going to say yes. And you're making that positive emotional connection. And I, I always laugh. My, my favorite way to move to the next step after I had, I had done my work there, I would just say, well, do you see any reason that we can't move forward with this? And they'd all, they would say no, which I intentionally wanted them to say no to say yes, because people are more comfortable saying no to a salesperson. So I, yeah. that's just the closing statement I used. So. And it works, it works well. And it's, you're building relationships. As I'm listening to you, you, you're not pitching, you're building. And if they say no now, okay, let's reconnect in two weeks. And you do and right. go, oh, I love it. Audience, this yeah. is a million dollar tip here. <laughs> get the book. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to get the book when I get off here. I'm going to order it because this is, I want to say simple and easy, but it's hard because this is what gets in the way, right? Our head. Right. And we screw and it all up. I do it. I know. 90% of our success or our failure is what sits between our ears. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, we're getting to the end here. And I, 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 maybe down the road, I'll, I'll bring you back because sales is such a, everybody's selling. You know, people don't realize you're selling to your wife, you're selling to your husband, boyfriend, girl, eh, we're selling all day. God, I love that you're shaking your head. It's great. But I do want the audience to hear about your event in Florida because now they can see you guys in person. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, yes, uh, Bob Berg and I, along with Kim Anjali, are going to be hosting a two-day event in one of the most beautiful locations in the world, West Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, we're going, it's a two-day sales intensive training. Uh, I, I don't necessarily think it's for newbies, although a newbie that's willing to invest in their career, because I mean, you've you got travel expenses and all that, it would be good for them. I think this is more for those salespeople who are doing all right, but they want to take it to that next level or a sales manager who wants to really equip their team better, and retain more of their associates. We're going to put on a two-day event in West Palm Beach, Florida with a night before gathering, and we're even going to have a Dixieland band playing, and we've got all kinds of fun things planned. But it's going to be an amazing event. Uh, it's just incredible. Um, the, the event itself is called SalesWise Live. And we're going to call this first one SalesWise Live 2024. Uh, but uh, the uh, <clears throat> I'm drawing a blank on the link. Sign up. If, if anybody who, if you go to our webpage about Streetwise, just sign up for the free chapters. It puts you on my email list. And that way I'll communicate with you about the links. Our sales page isn't even built yet, but when it's built, it's going to be saleswiselive.com. It's uh, it's in the works right now. It should be live in the next week or so. But it is going to be an amazing event. The hotel that we're staying at, uh, Steve, is it's at the uh, the Bend in West Palm Beach. There's a, a, a rooftop bar there. That's, they've got a pool and a rooftop bar. You're, you're sitting there looking at the intercoastal waterway you're uh, seeing the yachts and the, all that. And in the distance, you're seeing the Atlantic. And the Atlantic down in West Palm is beautiful. It's, there's some areas of the Atlantic are kind of murky. This is gorgeous down there. You get all of that. I think the hotel, the, their normal rate's like $700 to $1,000 a night. And they're giving it to our folks for two sixty nine. dollars I mean, it's just crazy. But the you get two days of intensive sales training that won't be like anything you've ever experienced anywhere and you get there are going to be people from all industries there. You get to you get to network. You get to hang around with good people, and you'll. I yeah. think I think your your followers will love that. Yeah, two sixty nine a night. Uh, and one of those dates again. The shout out those uh, dates. June second is the okay. night before gathering. The event itself is June third and June fourth. Gotcha. Perfect. And I'll get that in the show notes once you've got. I'll put the saleswise.com in the show notes. So yeah, audience, so go there if it's not ready reach out to uh, Jeff and connect. And how can they reach out to you, by the way? They have questions about our, our show or any questions sure. for you. 
Uh, the easiest way, of course, if you if you if you want to check out the book, that puts you on the list to, to get to me too. But that's streetwise to salesWise dot com. But you can also just go to jeffcwest.com. Uh, it's really my author page that with the start of it, you'll see author. That's where, uh, Steve, I'm going to put your podcast there. So people want to click on that and watch your podcast. It'll take them back yeah. to you. Uh, you. Sign up for anything on there. And what it does, it puts you on my email list. And I don't I don't bombard people with stuff, but I'll, I'll put out a couple of sales uh, training emails each week. But I'll also communicate about that event. Uh, and uh, I do a, a newsletter. I, I, I've given it the title Fusion Points Unleashed. Uh, so it's, it's in my sales coaching things that go out, but I try to be very respectful of people's inbox. I don't want to bombard them with anything. So fusion points unleashed fusion points unleashed is the name of the newsletter. Okay. I'll put that in there too. And I'm going to sign up for that and our audience. This is what happens with, and I'm going to say I'm a good person with two good people. We just met yesterday and we had a spot to do this, but this is, this is what it is about building a relationship and connecting and having a servant's heart. What Jeff just gave us was free, was it worth the million dollars if you follow it. Get the book and add to it because you need accountability and practice and all that to just be the better sales. If you can increase your sales 20 to 30%, and Jeff will probably agree with me, you'll be a happy camper when it comes to your income, right, Jeff? Absolutely. Yeah. And then yeah. there's an old saying, you know what you call a, a baseball player who can get a hit three times out of 10? You call him a Hall of Famer. Well, a salesperson who can start getting sales to happen three times out of 10, it gets pretty close to the same income level. It, it works. <laughs> so, That's a great on, I guess depending point. on what you're selling. but Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But still, you're going to be increasing your your uh, increase your income. And that's the most important thing. Well, Bob, uh, Jeff, I almost called you Bob Burke. <laughs> I would consider Jeff, that a compliment, so actually. Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> Jeff, thank you for being on the show. This has been great. My honor, Steve. And I want to mention, especially with this show, podcasts are great because they have a forward and reverse button audience. In this case, what Jeff just gave you over these last 25 minutes, you're going to want to pick points of the show and, and, and go back and forth. They're the story about the parable and those type of things. Use that. I'd love for you to watch the whole show or listen to the whole show. So would Jeff. But if you listen to five minutes and it changed your life, we're going to be fired up. That's our goal is just to help you any way we can. So utilize that. Don't forget about my swag, my hats, my t-shirts, my hoodies. I'll have the link in the hat, uh, uh, show notes for that. And also don't forget my TV show, Together We Serve. It's 2 p.m. Uh, Fridays, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. And I, as always, I want to thank you all for watching or listening. And we'll see you all in the next episode of Doing Business with the Servant's Heart. Thank you.